emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Now, anyone like me who grew up making models as a kid in the 1970s and 1980s will tell you that painting canopy frames was the one thing that you dreaded about making aircraft. We were kids, we were generally idiots, and only had crappy brushes and rubbish humbrol enamels, and no matter how hard we tried, every single canopy was an absolute disaster and more paint ended up on the windows than on the frames. Now, it turns out the solution is actually ridiculously simple and effective but so obvious that it was easy to miss let me show you how here's the canopy parts that we'll need the frames are molded as raised lines on the parts and our mission is to somehow get those raised strips painted and not the actual window panes being games workshop they do stand out in nice relief but don't even think about brush painting this step the best solution is to use an airbrush or a rattle can you'll see why shortly the first trick is getting these off the sprue now you have to be a little careful here as the acrylic can be quite brittle the best way is to snip the parts off with a nice dot of sprue still attached then you can carefully cut this excess twig back with finer more delicate cutters For any little nubs left behind, don't be tempted to sand them. This plastic will go opaque when sanded. Instead, carefully trim them back with a sharp knife. The next step requires low tack masking tape, a cocking tail stick and a cotton bud that I forgot to show here. Detack the tape to remove any excess glue by repeatedly sticking it to the bench. Cut a piece of tape that's just bigger than a canopy panel. Depending on your canopy, one piece could encompass the whole canopy, but for this one, we'll need many pieces. Then simply burnish the tape down with your finger cotton bud and a cocktail stick until the tape is flush and tight against the edges of the canopy frame. Make sure there are no wrinkles or bubbles. Incidentally, I am wearing gloves here to keep the canopy clean. Despite this, and for those of you in the know, I haven't dipped this canopy in gloss varnish to restore it or shine it up because it's a clunky scrap orc flyer and even the clear parts will be weathered later on. So I want to keep any scuffs and imperfections that it already has to suggest orky shonk. Once you've burnished the tape down, prepare your blade. For this step, if your knife has a replaceable blade, use a fresh blade now to get the smoothest cut possible. It's all about cutting paper smoothly and not scratching the plastic. Also, remember to dispose of your spent blades responsibly. If you use a medical scalpel type blade, pick up one of these Swan Morton Sharps boxes.
simply run a knife at 45 degrees to the vertical side of the frame and cut along the windshield edge where the tape is burnished in. Go very gently with almost no pressure. When you've worked around the part with tweezers, very gently pull back the tape from over the frame, leaving behind the tape that covers the windshield. Give it a last burnish against the edges and voila, masked to a perfectione. If you find any little gaps as you go along, you can cover these with little strips or slivers of tape. Once I'd masked everything, it took about an hour or so, I mounted them on bits of foam by looping some masking tape sticky side up. Note how I also masked the inside of the clear parts and sealed up any little gaps where paint can get in. We were ready for paint. I chose to use two Citadel Rattle Can primers purely because they were easy and also just about the right colour, Mephiston Red and Death Guard Green. Now sadly I can't film spraying them as that's got to be done outside. I sprayed them first with a coat of the Death Guard Green primer. This colour first so that the inside of the canopy frame is green to match the interior. And then, once that had dried, with the Mephiston Red to make the outside frame match the fuselage. I bet you never thought about having two different colours inside and out, eh? Now, as I said before, the reason you need to rely on rattle cans or airbrushes for these steps is that if you try and brush paint over masking tape, paint gets pushed under the tape and your canopy is ruined. Now you know. Now, Mephiston Red is ever so slightly different to the red I used on the fuselage, so whilst it was all still masked, I applied some pinkish Tamiya weathering pastel to break it up and fade it a little bit. To seal in the pastel and to protect the paint while still masked up, I applied some Humbrol 49 acrylic rattle can varnish. This stuff is brilliant, but must be used outdoors. And make sure it says acrylic, not enamel. Spraying an enamel varnish on non-enamel paints will always end badly. Once the varnish had dried, it was the scary time when the masking comes off. It's simply carefully peeled away with tweezers or cocktail sticks.
and voila one painted canopy not perfect but again this is an orc flyer so later weathering will hide any rough edges now the canopies are painted and sealed they can be applied to the cockpits the rear gunner canopy is a tight enough fit that no glue is required the cockpit canopies required glue though and i used a canopy glue in this case micro crystal clear Never, ever, 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 ever use normal plastic cements, glues, or even CA or super glue on clear parts. They'll fog up and ruin the clear parts. Just don't. To stick clear things, use any PVA-based glue. Things like Crystal Clear, Revell Contactor Clear, anything labelled Canopy Glue, or even just good old-fashioned craft PVA glue or Elmer's glue to our colonial cousins. Which is basically what all of those are. These dry clear, have no solvents, and give off no fumes or vapours to blemish the clear plastic. They'll hold the canopy in place just fine, although it can easily be pulled off again if needed, as it's not a permanent bond. And indeed, such glues are often used where a temporary bond is needed. If the canopy should ever come off, just peel the glue away and re-glue it. 